Let's go ahead and get ourselves started. Thank you for your patience as we get this all set up. Um, we got a lot of technology going now as we try and get everything recorded. Um, I'll apologize for being so slow about getting the videos up on the site. Uh, last week we got our sort of procedure down now, so you should be finding videos of the class sessions up there the night of the class. Okay, so if you miss anything and can't come to class or just want to review something, they should all be up there. Where they actually show up, let me kind of let you know about that, is out on Bimtopia. Let me just go there for just a second. On Bimtopia, which is my blog that I keep for just all sorts of different stuff I'm doing uh, that kind of answer people's questions about using the CAD programs, you will find a section that says either recent videos, that's a good place to be looking for things that are happening recently, or even under the Stanford class sessions, you'll find 2011 and then the session two from last time. When you go here, it doesn't look like much is happening, but what you need to do is just click on one of the titles, for example, the second part of the class when we were talking about floors, roofs, and sheets, things like that. You'll open this up. The video will load. And from here, it's just like being here. So you can go ahead and play this. If you want to, you can also pop it into a full screen view. And just kind of get the whole effect. And it's actually pretty good quality. It looks very much like it is here. The sound's pretty good in terms of what's going on. So hopefully, you'll get most of what was happening here in class. So that's just available to you. Again, we'll always be posting the different sessions. There'll typically be either like two, three, maybe even four parts to it. So try to keep them a little bit smaller so you're not having to listen to like 50 minutes at a time or something like that. You know, didn't do such a good job this last time, but we'll make, try to get better about that. So just be aware that's available to you as a resource. Okay, to get started today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a lot more about sort of walls, doors, and windows and the features of a building envelope. Um, and in service of really getting you going with assignment one. So let's actually start with assignment one. Okay, so you can actually sort of see what we have in mind and give you a target to shoot for. So what I'm going to do is switch over to session three. And under session three, if you open assignment one, the PDF file, let's take a look at what it says. Here's the deal. We're always going to give you little design assignments, little design assignments that will give you a chance to sort of exercise your modeling skills and your design skills too, but it's all about trying to illustrate your design through the model. So for this first one, what we want you to do is sort of create a simple wood frame structure okay, using the BIM tools. So one of the construction technologies we'll look at is wood frame. We could be doing concrete or steel, but for this first one, we'll stick with wood, kind of a very common technique for oh, like a simple residential construction or small buildings here in the US. And let's just kind of take a look at what we have in mind. Your ultimate format, what you want to be getting at the tail end of this, is we want to be submitting a DWF file containing the sheet views, the 2D views, as well as the 3D model. Okay, and I think in the, the first class last time, we actually got that far. We made it through that. And we'll kind of review some of that as a little bit later in the week in terms of looking what that looks like. But what you're supposed to be doing is creating this simple wood frame structure. Oh, the context <coughs> is something like, oh, let's say you were going to be doing a small field research station. Maybe we could put it at Jasper Ridge or something like that, a place where um, students could work in the field, have uh, some places for desks, maybe some lab bench for an equip some equipment, some storage space. But it had to create sort of a relatively small little structure that would just be like a remote office for people to be working out at the field station. Okay, so in terms of what we're looking for, we'll describe some of the requirements the way we would typically do in an architectural program. We would want it to be, oh, around 500 square feet. I say no more than 500 square feet, but for all these assignments, you know, we're never really precise on the square footage. If you happen to be 550 square feet when you're done, you're probably OK. If you're at 2,000 square feet, you're probably too big. So you know, go ahead and pull it back. But no one, you know, don't go shaving that last 0.2 square feet off to get it under 500, because we're just not that precise about what we're doing. We'll have some workspace for a couple desks and chairs, about 40 to 50 square feet per desk. That's kind of, oh, if you sort of think about like six by eight, something like that. And you can think about whether these uh, st work student workspaces are going to be like in an open plan office, or if you're going to have some little cubicle walls, or kind of give them little nooks and crannies to kind of position their desks in. So really, whatever you'd like to propose. Um, should be a nice long lab bench for some instrumentation, as well as a small sink, something like that, so they can clean up. 
a uh, little meeting area for some whiteboard discussions. And that could be really simple. You know, just a corner of a room that has like, oh, a little round table and four chairs and a whiteboard. Doesn't have to be like a separate meeting room in the classic conference room sense. Okay, so just a little something to kind of have a chalk talk. A storage room, about oh, 80 to 100 square feet. What would that be? Kind of 8 by 10, 10 by 10. Think about for all these different rooms, there's sort of sizes that work well. So even though it's 100 square feet, oh, what is it? You know, 5 feet by 20 feet is not a very useful room. Well, it is. It's kind of a very long, skinny closet. Okay, that could be okay if you have shelves on one side. But there's a lot of loft uh, space just for circulation in that room. So think about for all these different things, what are reasonable rooms, what it's actually like to go passing through space, how much you know, space you need to leave for doors to open, things like that. For example, we want you to put a little ADA compliant bathroom, which would be about five feet by eight feet somewhere in the space. And if you need an idea of what an ADA compliant bathroom is, oh, some of the bathrooms on this first floor over by Koopa are ADA compliant. It's pretty much, there's a sink that's mounted to the wall that you could actually roll a wheelchair under. And there's typically a toilet that's wall mounted sitting right next to it. But there's kind of an arrangement that the door can swing open and you can still wheel around within there and kind of get access to all the fixtures. So if you need any help about what that looks like, we can give you some help there. But a good example are like these ones that are down here on the first floor. Okay. Um, hopefully we'd have lots of, so let's say, some south-facing windows to capture light and heat, because there's probably not going to be any active heating in there. We want to try and use as much passive uh, energy as we can. And it'd be nice if they were operable. That is, you could open them and close them. So as you're specifying windows, um, casement windows or double hung windows or windows that are actually openable as opposed to strictly fixed would be good. And you could even think about if you're sort of like good about the whole uh, passive building <coughs> design, oh, where <coughs> operable windows should be placed. You have sort of thermal chimney effects and like uh, hot air is escaping where you want it to and you're drawing in air at the level where you want it to. You know, window design could be a very big piece of uh, kind of really doing a very nice structure. So for all these things, you know, again, this is just sort of supposed to give you enough meat to kind of get going, get your kind of creative juices flowing about what we're after. Um, so please do a, you know, a good design in terms of, you know, propose a, what you think would be a good design for these spaces. But really, ultimately, we're going to be looking at really how good or how well your models are illustrating those designs. That's really the criteria we're using more than anything. You want to get a chair? I, just, I feel bad with you standing. <laughs> no? Go steal one, steal one from next door, like in the conference room? Yeah. No one should have to stand for all this. OK, in terms of building methods, let's talk about that. Um, it's very important that your model always sort of reflects some sort of building method that's likely to be used. And for this structure, it's probably something that would be built by hand. Okay? We might actually sort of, if your structure's small enough, truck it in, sort of prefabricate it, and actually bring it into site and kind of drop it onto the site. But it's probably going to be fairly light and fairly small and compact, because we don't really want to have something you know, for something like this, I'm not picturing a lot of steel and concrete. Something very light that could possibly just be carried in by hand and built by hand would be good. Um, so in terms of thinking about the specific pieces, we can think about like a simple concrete slab that we uh, just pour on the ground. Could be a wood frame floor that's raised. But something that's very simple as a floor. The concrete might be nice because it would give us some thermal mass to capture some heat. Um, for the walls, it's probably two by six light frame wood construction. So like, let me ask this, like, you know, how many folks are not at all familiar with residential like, wood frame construction? Have most people sort of seen houses being built or seen kind of little buildings being built that are stud walls. And it's kind of important you sort of, you know, what, you have to model in a way that sort of replicates that. And in fact, I'll show you a model that looks sort of like that to kind of get you started. But that is, it's probably some little white wood frame walls, some roof of either 2 by 8 or 2 by 10 rafters. Given the sort of this size of a framing element, 2 by 8 or 2 by 10, there's probably a span of about 16 feet. If it's much longer than that, we probably have to have some intermediate walls that are supporting them. Okay, But you can probably span up to something like that. Um, and really, we're not going to worry too much about the structural soundness of your uh, uh, facility at this point. Uh, we could later go ahead and check that and kind of upsize the structural members if we need to or add some more supports and beams or things to kind of like uh, kind of flush it out as we get a little further in it. But just to kind of get you going, let's go ahead and actually open up, if you, can, if you want, um, if you open up the Section 3 starting point. So if you haven't downloaded that from uh, coursework, please do that. So again, back out there on coursework, go for the uh, Session 3 starting point. 
See if you can download that and open it up on your screen. I put together, oh, what I'll say is, you know, it's, it's sort of a, a simple little structure that's not very architecturally interesting, but it just sort of illustrates the type of construction we're talking about. Come on in. Grab a chair. Ah. <laughs> in that case, stand. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see if you can get that thing open. We're going to use this actual this file for today's class. So if you can get that open, let's go ahead and take a look at that. How are people doing in terms of just getting things off the files? Are most people pretty good? No. Except for I know there's that one machine back there that's sort of a problem. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yours. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh, we got that too? If you can follow along with your neighbor for right now, that would be fantastic. Okay, so, but we got to get those two machines replaced. Hmm. Hmm. Hang on here. Let me do this like we did last time. Da, da, da. Mr. Demi, for my back row friend, let's go ahead and see if we can get this going. Uh, section 3 is starting point. Okay. Until we get these things replaced. Okay, let's take a look at this little structure just so you sort of get a sense of what it is. If you look at it in 3D, you'll sort of see I have built just a simple little shed structure. It's not very big, but I wanted to sort of illustrate the basic construction type of or technique we're talking about. And if I go to the 3D section view, you'll actually get a view where it's cut away with using the section box. So here's kind of what we have in mind. We're looking at something that has, oh, kind of a simple little concrete slab. Usually when we have a concrete slab foundation, what we do is we thicken the edges a little bit so that where the loads come down from the roof through the walls, we have a little extra thickness there to support those loads. If we don't do that thickening, we have this problem where the concrete can shear right there because there's a lot of uh, shear stress on it right at that corner. Okay. On top of that, we'll typically have wood frame walls. Let me zoom in a little bit in there. And the way we do these, and we'll start playing with this in some detail today, is we'll have a stud layer. And typically what we have is the stud layer coming down, so it is right at the edge of the concrete. And then the finished layers are extending a little bit beyond the edge of the foundation. Again, there's a, that we do that so that the loads are coming down here, but that the finished layers, in fact, this is not even totally accurate, will usually overlap the edge of the concrete a little bit. We want the finish to sort of cover that seam so we don't have any like water intrusion right at that point. Okay, so we'll even kind of uh, detail that a little more finely. But typically in this wall will be sort of a stud layer with some base plates in here. Let me zoom on out. Up at the top, we'll have some sort of detail like this. Now in this representation of the wall, we're not seeing the top plates and the base plate, but there typically will be a top plate on this wall. And then these rafters would be sort of resting upon the top of that wall overhanging a little bit on this side. Let me zoom on out. Yeah, in this case, it's a simple little shed roof. This span is somewhere around like 15 feet, something like that. And what I mean relative to the structure is you're in a single sort of run of the roof, we can probably span about 15 feet. If we want to go further than that, we probably need to put some sort of intermediate wall or a beam in there to go ahead and support things so that uh, the rafters don't get overstressed. Now, even in terms of this simple little design, some things for you to think about. This currently has the same overhang on all sides. There's no reason you have to do that. We often do that just for simplicity. But think strategically about that. The purpose of overhang is really twofold. One is it's supposed to sort of shield the side of the building and shield you when you come out so rain's not falling on your head. The other thing that we're supposed to do with the overhang or we can do with the overhang is provide some sort of solar shading. So on the south side or whatever side has a lot of windows, if you want to shade from the sun during the hot summer months, okay, we can use the overhang to kind of provide some shading for that. So just because I sort of often show them as being even on south sides, your, your structure doesn't have to be that way. In fact, it probably shouldn't be that way if you're really adapting to the local climate conditions. Okay, so that's kind of an idea, you know, again, Hopefully your design is going to be a little more elaborate and interesting than mine, but that's sort of an idea, of at least in terms of what's going on with the structural system. Okay, 
Let's pop back over here to the assignment. So that's the structural system. To get you started, we actually uploaded an RVT file containing some standard wall and door and floor and roof types to the coursework website. I'll take a look at that about why that didn't open, because it should be in the 2010 version. If I have somehow messed up, I'll back it off to the 2010 version. Um, also, it's compressed, so always remember, whenever I put things up there on the website, uncompress them so you can open them. Otherwise, you'll run into trouble there. Now, at the tail end of this process, what I'd love you to do is create a model that includes walls, doors, floors, roofs, things like that. Okay. Also, some infill objects, things like, oh, some furniture, some plumbing fixtures, things that actually give us a sense of how your space is going to work. It's not just a 10 by 10 room, but you know, how is the furniture and the seating and all that going to work? It gives us a, a really much better idea of how your design is going to work. It gives us some context and scale if you include those things. Plumbing fixtures in the bathrooms and maybe the, the, the sink on the uh, lab countertop, things like that would be good. All those things are uh, components that we can load in from the library. So, you know, with a little uh, kind of looking around in the library, you'll find most of what you need. You shouldn't have to be recreating a lot of stuff there. To share your document or your model, we would like you to go ahead and have a floor plan view, a roof plan view, some exterior elevations, and a section or two cut through the building to kind of show like a, how it's all constructed. Um, we'll show you examples of all those things, but I hope you are starting to realize from the past couple classes that if we get the model right, getting the views out is actually pretty easy in terms of what we want to do. That's actually not the hard part. Okay. We'll also ha have you put together some door and window schedules and a room schedule, numerically summarizing some of the information about the project. And we'll talk a little bit more about that either on Thursday or the following Tuesday. So before the assignment's due, you'll have some time to kind of, kind of pull together these different views. For now, just focus on the design of the building. OK, and then we'll work on uh, filling out all the different views. That's actually pretty quick. We'll create some sheets to hold these things together. There's already a title block in there that's 24 by 36. And in the end, please give us just what I'll call a virtual plot, which is a DWF file containing all these things. So go ahead and submit to us in the Dropbox on coursework a 2D DWF containing all the sheet views and a 3D DWF containing all the model. Okay? And again, if that's sounding a little bit hazy right now, we'll talk about that explicitly like next Tuesday in terms of really the final chunk of what you have to do. So just focus on the model for now because that final step is actually pretty easy. Okay. In terms of when all this is due, this is going to be due, it's not this Thursday, but the following Thursday at midnight, which is actually pretty generous for the amount of time for doing this. It's not the expectation that it should take nearly this amount of time to do this. We want to sort of give everyone plenty of time to get in the lab, go to office hours if you need help, and sort of just get it done. If you sat down and just tried to do this, you could probably get it done tonight or tomorrow. It's, it's really not that huge an assignment in terms of what's going on. But we're just trying to, especially in light of how many people are trying to get things done, can allow some cushion. So given that we're allowing some cushion, don't make the mistake of like waiting till like uh, next Tuesday or next Thursday afternoon to come on in and then try to jump on because all everyone else who thought that would be a good strategy will be in here at the same time and that'll just be sort of really messy for you. So you know, use your time judiciously and we'll set up a schedule of uh, lab hours and assistance to kind of just help you through this whole process. Okay, so it sort of makes sense? Yeah, okay, needy, go ahead and that yeah, hopefully will be a fun kind of way to dive right in and get yourself started. There's really no way to learn this except uh, you know, the best way to learn is just to dive in and start building your own stuff. So as you do that, yeah, if you want to be creative and extend beyond what's going on here, try to keep about the same size and shape. But you know, feel free to demonstrate your creativity and experiment with things that we haven't talked about yet. If you want to start throwing in 3D perspective views or want to render something or, or want to start thinking about structure, feel free. Don't let us hold you back. So just kind of uh, push ahead as much as you'd like to. Okay? Beauty. Let's go ahead then and shift back over to what we're going to be doing in class today.